and partners, and it concerns the imminent threat to national security. We note with concern an emerging trend that reveals a state-sponsored strategy of undermining the constitution, the constitutional order, and the rule of law, which constitutes a serious threat to peace, security, and well-being of all Kenyans. The breakdown in the rule of law, especially when orchestrated by the government and government agencies, spells doom for our social and economic recovery. Following the ravages of COVID-19 pandemic, which are still ongoing, our constitution places a duty on the state and all state agencies and all public officers to deliver services equally to all Kenyans and to apply the law without fear or favor to all. It is therefore patently a violation of the constitution for services and or the law to be applied in a skewed or partisan manner. The constitutional duty means that each state agency and each state or public officer is individually liable for contravening the constitution and cannot rely on the usual, in quotes, orders from above. We therefore urge all state agencies and all state officers to carefully read and internalize Article 2 and 3 of the Constitution, which assert clearly that the Constitution is the supreme law of the Republic and binds all persons and all state organs at both levels of government, and that no person may claim or exercise state authority except as authorized by the Constitution, and that every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. Any state organ or agency, be it the Cabinet, the National Security Advisory Council, or the head of state must be mindful of their directives lest they be in violation of the constitution. The recent recommendation from the National Security Advisory Council and its adoption by a non-constitutional cabinet, we call it unconstitutional because it does not comply with the two-thirds gender rule, is in blatant violation of the constitution insofar as it is aimed at suppressing legitimate political activities of those not viewed favorably by the president and his BBI brother, the former prime minister. It is now time for Kenyans to stand up, speak up, and reject these well-documented attempts by President Kenyatta and a section of his government to overthrow the constitution of Kenya. We must all rise to reject these unconstitutional directives which seek to gag all Kenyans except those supporting one faction within the government. In effect, the National Security Advisory Council and Cabinet, through its approval, have abrogated to themselves the right to determine what and whose speech is permissible. And this is a contravention of the Bill of Rights in our Constitution. And the rights in our Constitution are God-given. They are not given by the state. The only duty the state has is to facilitate their enjoyment, not to trample on them. Provisions, provision of security to all Kenyans is one of the primary duties of the state. Failure by the state agencies, namely the police, the Ministry of Interior, and others have led to incidences where politically motivated violence has been planned and executed without any state intervention, resulting in mayhem, 
injuries and death. The National Intelligence Services and the police are equipped with capacity to detect if, when, and where violence or other lawlessness is being planned and to stop it before it is executed. This is what Kenyans pay for and expect them to do. The failure and or neglect by these agencies is what caused the recent Muranga chaos resulting in the loss of lives of two Kenyans and injuries to scores of others. We must hold the leadership of the concerned agencies and the Cabinet Secretary Ministry of Interior accountable for these failures. The Uhuru administration cannot now use these failures as an excuse to roll back the freedom of association, assembly, and the right to disseminate ideas. And we assert that Kenyans, the two Kenyans who died, did not die from political speech. They died as a result of failure by law enforcement agencies to do their duty of protecting Kenyans. We've also noticed double standards in application of the law, which we have witnessed since the advent of BBI popularization campaigns. And more recently, last weekend, when meetings of one group were given a go ahead, while meetings of another group were stopped. This marks of intolerance of dissent, and especially the dissent on BBI, which is unacceptable and must be outrightly rejected. It cannot be that only those articulating the viewpoints of the president and his partner in chief can enjoy freedom of speech and assembly, while others are interrupted, barred, and generally harassed. We reiterate it is unacceptable and unconstitutional. We are concerned by utterances or directives in quotes by unelected persons, be they party chiefs, political allies, or political entrepreneurs. Which directives are then acted upon by state agencies? This is a clear manifestation of power being exercised outside of the constitutional order by unelected and unaccountable persons. Elected leaders, and especially the president and his deputy, enjoy limited authority courtesy of the express provisions of the Constitution. This authority must be exercised as such by the office holders and not abdicated or ceded to others. There exists legal and political means of sanctioning elected or even appointed leaders of whatever rank and anything outside of these legal methods is unconstitutional. The president and those acting in his name have no authority to deny the deputy president or any other constitution office holder the right to exercise their mandate or purport to sanction them using unlawful means. We can't stop them from doing whatever they want to each other, but they must only use lawful means. That's all that we are saying. Police must be conscious of their role under the 2010 Constitution. They are required to exercise power in a manner consistent with the Constitution, irrespective of any directive from the executive. Individual police officers, and especially senior officers, must be held accountable for actions of juniors under their command and when they violate the law as a result of the seniors giving unconstitutional orders. We remind constitutional commissions, especially the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the Commission on Administration of Justice, the National Gender and Equality Commission, 
who are mandated with oversight of government on human rights and administrative justice that their silence on human their silence amounts to acquiescence of the ongoing violations these constitutional commissions are accountable to the people of Kenya from whom they receive their mandate and their pay they must not be beholden to the executive to the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, we hear your skewed utterances that echo the directives of the executive. We remind you that you are accountable to Kenyans, not the executive, and that you are individually and collectively accountable for your actions. And we remind you your actions must be aligned to your mandate and to the constitution. Meanwhile, the Attorney General, for all intent and purposes, appears to be sleeping on the job. His mandate under Article 156 is to be the Chief Legal Advisor of Government. It's also to promote, protect and uphold the rule of law and defend public interest. All the unfortunate ill-advised happenings are under his watch. We remind him that like us public officers, he is accountable to the people of Kenya and it is the people of Kenya he is failing and hurting by not rising up to his duties. We are less than two years to the next electoral cycle. And learning from our history, the state must cultivate trust of institutions by Kenyans and especially the law enforcement agencies. Further erosion of public trust in law enforcement agencies can only lead to lawlessness and discord. This situation must therefore be addressed immediately and the buck stops with the president, who is accountable to Kenyan people for the manner in which he discharges his mandate under the constitution and especially under Article 131, which declares him as the head of state and government as a symbol of national unity, not national discord, and also enjoins him to respect, uphold, and safeguard the constitution, to promote and enhance the unity of the nation, to promote, respect the diversity of the people and communities of Kenya. Diversity includes dissent on issues and also to ensure the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms and the rule of law. Finally, we would like to reiterate that constitutions all over the world exist in order to limit power, so that those who exercise power must exercise it within the four corners of the constitution and not outside of it. Therefore, illegitimate exercise of unlimited authority by this administration is in effect an overthrow of the constitution of Kenya, which as Kenyans of goodwill we must not tolerate. We have an obligation to resist, reject this emerging situation and to demand an equivocal and immediate restoration of the constitutional order. There ends the statement, and uh, I am here with Boniface Mwangi of the Ukweli Party and, and with Michael, yeah. Michael representing the movement for democracy and growth, MDG.